Hey, what's up? This is Todd Smith. I'm back with another video, and I want to drop my one week review on the Behringer TD3. I've had it for just over a week now. I've used it in a few videos. I've been using it a lot off camera. I've explored 90, 95% of the machine. There are still some things in the sequencer I have not touched, but I have jumped into the sequencer, made my own sequences. But in general, I've been controlling it mainly from core gadget from external MIDI. So between touching pretty much every aspect of the inner synth and using it external with MIDI and an iPad and using an external sequencer, I figure it's time to give a solid final review of the TD3. Before we get into this review, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to check out this video. Without your views, your support, and the monthly Patreon support, I wouldn't have the motivation to pump out content pretty much every single day, push my dreams forward, and I can't thank you enough for that motivation. Jumping back to the TD3, about the only thing I haven't really touched is MIDI out. I haven't sent MIDI out on the sequencer to another machine. Honestly, I don't really think there's much point in that if you're not doing hardcore acid stuff. The, the sequencer in this thing is renowned hard to work with, but in a sense, it's unique um, recording style is what made acid, not just the sound in here. It took the sound and the sequencing style together to truly create that acid niche old school vibe. But it's not really great at making many other styles, which is why it kind of failed, I think, in a sense, because what it, it really didn't apply to anything known at the time, but it created something new. But when it comes to me in this machine, I'll be 100% honest, I'm not chasing that old school acid sequence sound. I like playing with the tones, I like playing with the 303 structure, but I don't like being limited to that old school sequencer. So for me, the MIDI out will be the least used aspect of this machine. I'll be using the internal sequencer when I want to create that really niche acid vibe in my sequencing. And the rest of the time, I'll be using it external from Core Gadget and various other sources. When it comes to performance on both ends, it's solid. The internal sequencer is great and really performs and creates that niche acid sound. The external performance is 100% solid. I'd never had any holding notes, anything that didn't work correctly. It really was great. Obviously, you have no external control via knobs because it's analog. You must touch the machine. But when you hook this thing up to a keyboard or a MIDI controller, it's really fun to even just play on keys. So the MIDI in the internal sequencing is solid, and I have no reason to doubt the MIDI out is solid too. You do have two MIDI channels on this machine. I made a video on how to change your MIDI channels without software, and I will put it in the video description down below. One MIDI channel is for MIDI in and one MIDI channel is for MIDI out. When it comes to build quality, as I stated, it's very light, but the original was very light too. So they kept it very close to the original form factor. But even with its plastic and very light build, the knobs feel firm, react well, and are very solid, even though they're plastic. Within the week of using it, I've had zero issues when it comes to buttons not responding, knobs not doing what they should do, everything I did, the machine performed perfectly. When it comes down to the tone and the sound of this machine, that's where it just becomes the ultimate selling point. For the price tag, you really can't beat it. It's because it's a limited synth and very easy to use, but pretty much every tone that comes out of it is usable in some form of electronic music, even beyond acid. And its ability to be in the forefront of the mix and just stand out ahead of everything else, obviously just an ability that not every synthesizer has. So to have that power with that simplicity is actually very, very powerful. Some of the most well-loved synths ever were simple. And the distortion that Behringer added to the TD3 really adds a lot to the sound structure. You only have two knobs there when it comes to distortion and tone. It can really affect the sound and what the synth is bringing to the table. So it's pretty cool that you have the ability just to do that on the fly and it has major performance ability. I've been using it for a week now and I'm already sold on the ability to just swap it back and forth and create transitions of sound so I'll be 100% honest with you. I mean, this thing is a steal. I think it's something that pretty much everyone 
is gonna eventually get at some point at the price tag. And I didn't really ever think I needed a 303. When I thought of a 303, I thought of just pure acid sequencing and I thought that software would always be enough to cover that acid niche sound that I chased, but I think having a hardware replication of that 303 was one of the best things that ever happened in my studio. So it's awesome. It's, it's crazy how I never knew I needed one, but you know, everyone needs a 303. So what do you guys think? Do you guys have one? Are you considering getting one? I'd love to know your opinion. As always, stay positive, stay creative, support each other in peace.